The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, this uh, September the 12th. <clears throat> Dollar down 77 to 34,586. Now, Cisco is part of that problem right here. Cisco is down. Oh, Cisco is not down. Cisco is uh, unchanged right here at 5670. Am I updating? I, I, I've had crazy things with Cisco. It was down. 15 or 13 at some point, and now it's kind of unchanged. Oh, anyway, whatever it is, um, a very fascinating market. Let me just go through the numbers because there's a great deal to discuss. Um, but there's no rush to discuss it. Why? Because the market is in a downtrend of the daily. The weekly game, we all see on Friday where it, is, where it stands. But at this particular point, I'm hearing a lot of people keep saying, this market is ready for an explosive move to the upside, and then there are some that say, uh-oh, we're going down for months. I'm kind of in the camp that says, I'm going one step at a time. I always like to do that because that's the thing that keeps us in the, in the trade and keeps us in the trend. And with that said, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Look, the Dow had a high, all-time high of 35,679 August 1st, just for disclosure purposes. That's exactly the day we went short. We still short. Um, and it only went down to 34,029. Didn't even take out the low of uh, July the 10th, which was at 33,705. Went to 34,029. Ran up. The MACD was flat. A flat MACD said so you got to keep the, the, the last uh, notation of the trend in place. And that just says it's in a sell mode. So it says... You can keep it in that sell mode until it, uh, the nine period moving average, that's the nine differential of the MACD, really expands. The stochastic was just in the 50%. It just really flat. The on-balance volume blue line was good. But that 914, well, let's just have a look at it here. The 914 in the Dow. I'll go to the Dow, INDU, there it is, um, has gone pink. And that pink, just like the green stayed for quite a while, the pink can stay for a while. So that pink is the nine period differential, a uh, nine period exponential moving average under the 14 period moving average. And it's just telling me that so far the daily downtrend remains intact. But wait a minute, if you go to the weekly, and that's going to cause me a problem with the notation that I've got here, but that doesn't matter. If I go to the weekly, look what happens. That weekly is still very positive. Let me just put this back here. I don't want to lose it. And I'm going to say if I go to the S&P, S&P weekly, look how strong it is still. So I'm in the camp that really says there's a consolidation that's been going on for uh, almost two months. Basically, it is involving the daily charts and because there's a rotational correction going on, it means that there are enough stocks to hold the market in this kind of steady sideways action as various indices or stocks within each group take a breather and the ones that were slowing down and coming, coming to a halt on the downside have at least a, a rebound potential. I mean, I can even put Disney in that camp. Disney is down, is up today at $1.31. You can see this pink nine period moving average in the weekly is still very negative. Price is trying to rally very nicely. And if you go to the daily chart right here, the price has moved up very strongly from, I think it was just over 80. Let me give you the exact figure, 79.73. So this is exactly four points. Uh, not bad, 2%. But wait, what's going on here? That pink nine period moving average hasn't crossed positive even over here when you had that big move. This is going into the August time frame. The pink then deflected low until it moved positive for a couple of days and then turned negative. So I like to look at this as possibly my indicator of last resort. In this particular instance, let's go back to our charts. The QQQ, 
daily. Price is moving lower. It's already struggling to maintain the upward move into the three, uh, 380s to 376. And the nine period moving average is still very nicely over the 14. And the trajectory for both of them is up. And in the weekly chart, you'll see that this is even more striking. Look how big. Look at the distance. Look how wide the aperture is between the green and the black. So it says for this to really turn down. And what I'm really, really looking at here is that We've used up time. Remember, I look at, I like to look at the market as both time and price. Sometimes you get a consolidation in time. Sometimes it's in price. Sometimes it's time and price. And sometimes you get a whopper of a move and price moved dramatically like it did over here. And until it turned pink, there was, uh, there had to be a big price movement, right? So in this particular instance, going to the weekly chart of the QQQ, the IWM, Monthly chart, a weekly chart, you can see getting closer and closer to turning down. It hasn't crossed negative yet, but the daily chart, look at this, pink and a deflected lower. So that's one of the weakest of the indices. Let me just do the same thing. Let's go to Toll Brothers because I had a question about Toll. And I said, it's remarkable in this environment why Toll Brothers should be holding so well. Even today, it's up 44 cents at 82.45. And the nine is over the 14. This is a daily chart. If you look at the uh, HGX, this is the F uh, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. It's pink, and it's been that way for a little while, and all the rallies haven't really helped it. It's still pink. And that says that overall, there is some deterioration in the daily chart. Look at the weekly chart. Yeah, look at the week. Nothing. It's like, what, who, where, I mean, who, us, down? No, we're holding beautifully. So I wanted to put that into perspective. Let's look at the TLT. Look at that. Price and trajectory of the 914 and price are all in the same downward direction. It's making the arch formation. We'll see how it's going to test this left side low of 91. Uh, what was that? 90, oh, this last one was 92.26 way back you know, uh, last year. It was lower than that. Okay, so within that context, what we're looking at is trying to put this whole package together. This is a rather large and rather spread out in sectors, consolidation, mostly concerning daily charts. All right, so with that, we've got Dow down 70, 34,059. Let's go through this in closely now. The dollar holding up at 28 ticks at 104.82. I think there's a chance we make one new high, and then I wouldn't be surprised if, if that becomes the real test of does the dollar continue higher? Look, the MACD is good at 89%. Uh, the stochastic, sorry, MACD is good, stochastic's at 89%. Uh, I don't have on-balance volume because this is an index, but if you had to go to the UUP, which we are long, um, it did the one-to-one -one with the falling uh, X, expanded Chapman wave one-to-one uh, -one expansion in a, the same degree, the angle, and then it started to slow down. It, the actual price would be around about 29.36. The high three days ago was 29.34 within two pennies, leg D in the weekly chart, but all of the technicals are pretty good. I'll be back, downtown 71, s is out eight, uh, down 10. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So we're looking at uh, a question in the tent here. Uh, John wants to know, appreciate the VFF. I can see it going to 160s and check out HE for a play. So I'm looking at this and I, I look at the, I always look at the chart. I don't even look at numbers or anything. I just look at the chart. I start doing my chapter wave notation. I check to see if I'm correct in terms of uh, daily, weekly, monthly. Then I might look at the price. Uh, and then I look at the name and it says Village Farms. I put Village Farms and I'm looking and I, I say, you know, Village Farms. Every every couple of years or so, there's something that's called farms that comes out, and um, they all do different things. And I'm looking at this, and I say, oh, my goodness. If I was looking at this just as a chart, then I would look at this and say, oh, yeah, this looks like an, a biotech. I don't know why it's called village farms. Maybe they, maybe they have cultures of rats or something like that. And then I look at it closer, and I see that it once hit 20. And it's now down uh, in the pink sheet area. It's it's a point uh, it, just the other day, two, two, three weeks ago, it was down at 50 cents. Not only that, it has all those zeros. When you see four, four zeros after the dot, you know, there's like pink sheets. This is the one that you have to almost book, a, book an appointment to buy it because it doesn't have that much volume. Or there's something really wrong with it. Or they didn't pass muster and therefore they, they have to prove a whole bunch of things to be able to get to just your number plus two zeros, which is the usual thing. This is a four zeros. Then I, then I said to myself, wait, village farms, is that, what I, is that, let me see, can I, I didn't read this correctly because it's on this gray background that Trade Station has for their charts. And it says international. Now I'm saying to myself, okay, it's, it, it's not a biotech because it has to do something with farms. It went almost to the 200 period moving average yesterday of a dollar 18. It's pulled back a little bit today, and then I look at it and say, "Oh, it's trading at a dollar point oh five one oh." I look at the weekly chart. It's got a very quick peak A, one bar rest. Leg B goes to peak B in one bar. Has a one bar rest. You remember my, my rule of one three six? And then what does it do? In one bar, it goes to leg C. I'm looking at it and say, "What is this?" Then I read it and it says, "I say." Wait, village farms, and then they call themselves international. <laughs> I mean, really, that's like saying um, 
it's a really big little something or other, right? Um, just there's an anachronism there. So, um, Peaky and the Dent says, VFF has great tomatoes. Well, what it says is, Village Farms International is recreational cannabis health and wellness spaces. Everything now makes sense. Yeah, it does look like a biotech because biotech has been under tremendous pressure for quite some time. We spoke about MJ yesterday, which is the cannabis uh, ETF, alternate harvest ETF. We once had an absolutely fantastic gain in this, but not for a long time. Have we even touched it? And it goes from 2.84 on the 24th of August and today's high is 4.70, a $2 gain. What is that? About, um, uh, it's about 80% or something like that. Well, that makes sense. Because as I said yesterday, now I think they're kind of in play, making a base, a higher base. Doesn't mean to say they're going to sort from here, because always the whole thing about the whole cannabis sector is that there's always fantastic news that could be, could be, could be, and then it never is. So let's go back to, uh, what was it, VFF? Uh, VFF. VFF, there it is. So I don't think it was a question. I think it was more a statement. Yes, I think this is in play. The 9 is over the 14. The price is way over the 9. Uh, the MACD is good. Stochastic is very weak at 54% on balance volume, slightly overbought. So it's in play only as a trade. As a core position, I would say on the next big drop towards the 0.72 to 0.68 area, Give me a yell and we look at it together because that might mean if it holds there, you start to make this whole base of support for months a key cushion. And that's what you really need. And then you can start looking at it and say, well, if it holds under these conditions, having pulled back but not taken out the low, uh, low of 0.50 something or other, um, it's in play as a position play rather than just a trade. So as it stands right now, I, I, I don't know if this has a history of making peak Ds. I know it has a p history of making peak A and a B failure and making a low low in the dreaded H pattern. This is the first time he's actually been followed through to the upside um, after a long hiatus in the weekly, in the daily charts, one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, 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 about 15 or 16 bars before it made leg B, and then one, two, three, four, five, six bars before it made leg C. So it's getting shorter and shorter. It's in play, but I'm not going to recommend a dollar oh three stock in this particular area to say other than as a very quick trade, because there is a good chance that that we got so close to the 200 period moving average of 1.18 that there's a chance we're going to make a die for a, you know, a spike for it. It's a 103, and I would say if it closes today or the next or, or, the, or to Wednesday under 0.97, I don't know if it's going to do it in a quick move. It'll take longer. But in the next two sessions, it should try for the 1.18 area. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, next question I had is um, IONQ. I put that in my newsletter. We did not we did not have a trade in it. What does it say? Oh, there's that leg C. Oh, and today it was such a close call that I was going to use this because it had a really good two sessions here. Um, to go to that leg C, to break above that peak E, I had drawn a look. I drew a left side, right side, price, time match. Look at this. This is I Ionic, I-O-N-Q, I quantum computers. Uh, let me see. It's up $1.44 today, 21.12. It's up 7%. And the irony of the whole thing is I probably would have got it for subscribers because it closed yesterday at 19.77. And knowing the way I usually put these things in, if it was a single-digit stock, I might have had to say buy it no more than two cents higher than yesterday's high. Um, and then I would have had a whole bunch of trading things to do. But I probably would have said on a dip, and usually I go for the round number. It closed at, what did I say closed at? Uh, it closed at 19 Point sixty eight, and I'm probably I'm sure I would have said something below nineteen thirty two, and it went to nineteen twenty, and here it is at twenty ninety three in leg C, it looking very good. I, is it still something that you can buy? Well, for me, it's just kind of gotten away for the safety factor of the risk to reward, and in this market, anything that's moving up like this is looks to me like it. it, it you know, for instance, we have a couple of stocks that are doing really well today. 
um, because they are they have been almost nothing to do with the trend of the market at this particular point. They are independent. That's what I'm trying to do under the radar stocks that act nicely when the market's acting purely and when the market has a big move up, they can just do their own thing. They can either follow or they can pull back, but they're in their own trajectory. And at this particular point, that I think is really important because look, now the Dow's down 91, as the B's down 18. Look at that big acceleration. So I needed to show this because I was asked about it. Um, this is this is my chart of the e mini. Unfortunately, I, I just wasn't able to actually put any trades on. But look what I did. I drew an X on this bar as a target of 45, 95, 50. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at TFNN you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry tedious text either TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at tfnn.com or on tfnn's youtube channel and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv because I'm saying it's a Dow stock, but no, no, we have Oracle, O-R-C-L, oh my. Now, does that mean that, what's his name, Ellison won't be able to do his San Francisco sale, a, a race? Oh, isn't that, I mean, down 16%, down 13%, Oracle hitting uh, within pennies of an all-time high uh, just yesterday. Hit 127.42, was that? 127.42. 
and the all-time high was June the 15th of 127.54. How does this work? 127.54, June the 15th. Type that in. 127.54. And then yesterday, what does it do? It goes to 127.42. How do these things work? How does the market, well, horizontally, I understand it pretty well. People remember the left side, they remember the high or the low. When it goes diagonally up and it goes 20, then 25, then 30, then 35, how does it know that angle? That's something different. But look at this. A double top in a monthly chart, not an all-time high, I believe, because if we, well, maybe it is an all-time high. Let me just open this up, give it a good squeeze. I don't think I can go, yeah, do I go back that far in this particular chart? Yep, I do. Back in 2000, <laughs> all-time high, what am I talking about? Remember, Oracle was the high right there. It was August, I think. Yep, August the uh, August of 2000, it hit 45.50. That's before a split. So 45.50. And here it is trading at 110, more than double that. Uh, 20 years, 20, what, three years later? Um, all right, well, that forget that about the old time high. I did remember that. Some of them have, like Microsoft is way above that 2000 high. So Oracle, down sharply. So it wasn't a Dow stock. So the Dow is actually pulling back because it's a broader move to the downside. Now, let me just do this here because, I, I, let me do this before I forget. FXI, that's the um, large cap. China uh, ETF up eight cents at 27.31, but in that lower register, I, lower register, that lower range, having been repelled at the 200 period moving average, I think this is going to have a second arch formation, a smaller one, and then even a smaller one than that. So I just say keep, be careful because if at 20, if if it starts to trade under 25.50, anytime in September. That's going to be a big problem. Meantime, it's just stuck in a sideways range. The other one was, I wrote it down somewhere. I think I did. If I remember this correctly, it was in the electric. So X, XBEF, designs, uh, develops, manufactures smart EVs. It's the same kind of pattern, but a much better weekly chart. A way fantastic weekly. Monthly chart needs a lot needs a lot to, uh, to, to really improve. But this daily says, yes, yeah, stuck in a range. Uh, up eight, up 18 cents at 1866. XPEV is the symbol. Speng, Inc. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And all I can hear is, uh, you know, all, all I can say is that it is holding okay, but um, I think it's more in a trading range. So better than anything I see. Okay, I'm not sure what that all refers to over there. Um, so yeah, here's another question that I had. Could I look at so I'll do this now. I think I did it earlier on, but I'll do it again. HGX, this is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. Same pattern. We've seen this pattern over and over. Large arch formation, like a dreaded H, but large, with the potential for a Chapman falling axe breakout to the upside, but more likely doing a slow rollover. The 9 is still fantastic in the uh, weekly chart of the HGX uh, index. The daily says, holding well, but not breaking out, not breaking down. Holding well is another thing. It's another way of saying going sideways. <laughs> so I, I don't see anything very much there. So the question came in with the SMHs. Uh, SMHs are actually running a little bit here. They're up two cents at 150.51. Had a Chapman Wave Roman candle yesterday for subscribers. I didn't make a big deal about it. I didn't mention it. But if it uh, traded for 90 minutes below... Uh, this wick, 149.70. It did go below. It went to 149.10. Now it's nicely above it. But if it closed, if it closed on a one-hour candle, under that 149.50 level, there's a real good chance we would have tested yesterday's low. At this particular point, I'd said all we're watching now is does the nine-period moving average cross negative on the SMHs today? Because that is going to be very important, regardless of any of the News. I mean, you've got Wednesday, you've got news, economic news, you've got Thursday, you've got Friday. It doesn't matter. It says, let me go to the major chart that we're looking at here. It says in my work, indicator of, of uh, most of the time, indicator of last resort to confirm moves. SMH weekly, nothing to see here. It looks fabulous. But here's the daily. Look, little pink sign. But the day is young. 
It could still have a rally and go to 150.90, and all of a sudden that S disappears. Like that L held, that's for long, and this is short, just the indicator, not your position will be our short to SMHs from two points of the all-time high. Um, so all I'm looking at here is this is going to be a clue. Remember, my, I, I talk about this all the time just to remind some of you. My belief is that for decades, not years, but decades, where the semiconductors go, generally the market is going to either follow or sometimes the market will lead. And lately we've seen the market kind of lead with the SMHs lagging. And then all of a sudden, in this case, 159.42 was the high in the semiconductor, the VanX semiconductor ETF back in November of 2021. Plunges to 83. I would call that almost a 50% decline, and it comes roaring back and makes a new all-time high at 161.17. I don't want to fight this indicator because it is chips on just about everything. Well, maybe not in cookies, in those chocolate chip cookies or something a little bit different. But other than that, anything that moves will have a chip. And um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the oil of the 21st century. So it's telling us an incredible story. And we have a mix between strong oil and yet jets. The U.S. Airlines ETF jets down lows, had a fabulous rally up into the 22s, and now it's in the 18s. Made a just look at this. This is a pattern we look at all the time. I didn't draw it in here. I might have, or maybe I drew it and lost it because I've drawn it in so many. But look at this. So it says, in this particular pattern, I usually go before the base. I go to, to the key support level that's holding a moving average. So I kind of go to this level right here, and I go in, uh, to the midpoint if I can, the plumb line high. That's this plumb line right here. Whoops. No, that's the wrong plumb line. Plumb line means the exact number of bars to the left, thinking it could make an exact number of bars to the right. I, I don't think that's the case here, but I'm still going to draw it in because it's kind of the way I start off with this particular technique. And look what happened. It did not. It's way, way late. But normally what I would do is I would go to the trough after the high was made and see what happens. Well, th in this case, it only moves it a bar later. So that would have been to about there. So it's still missed. And that's just said that in the jet, the target that I would have, the first big target where we are from here is at 18.07 and the low today is 18.36. Very close. And look what happened in the month of charge the tells us definitely inside track calendar and the month is young. So it has to take it in nine feet. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So let me just show you this. Yeah, the question came in about on your 10 minute chart that you posted in the den. What is your notation for this particular move down after that uh, um, dreaded H formation? So I'll do a couple of things right here. You see here on the daily chart, there's this H pattern. These H patterns fail if they take out the left side uh, low and, and hold there for two, two out of three bars. There's a real good chance you can get a one-to-one -one of the arch down to the bottom. We've seen that before. Um, I posted in the den that the 45.17 level this morning, the first 90 minutes, well, we've done an hour and 10 minutes. First 90 minutes will be the key support to hold. I drew this in. I showed this chart with a chain wave. Um, this is called inside wedge target support line, pink on the way, dash pink on the way down, dash green on the way up. And I drew that in, and it got very close to the 45.19 low that was made yesterday at 10 past 11 Eastern time. Um, and then and in the channel, we're always looking for a D or an E to start to see whether or not we were about to have a big tumble to the downside. There's your D, the first one back at three o'clock yesterday afternoon. This is one is um, the last night. Uh, was that today? Oh, no, it was, gee, I, what a long day we've had already. Yeah, that was 11 o'clock last night. Peak E and it makes a cup formation. Retested with the peak A, B, C, D, E again. Under the previous high, comes back down. That's where I started to draw this in um, as I was waking up this morning and looking at this peak C1, C2, C3. Like a D, it failed there. And look at this 200 period moving average. It kept holding, 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 and then boom, we went below it. It became a, re a repellent zone. We popped up and then we pulled back. So I had said that uh, and for the first 90 minutes, that 45.17 level must hold is really important. And now I'll expand this and show you a look. So this, uh, very often at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, after that first initial uh, economic report or whatever it is, it could even be the 10 o'clock news, whatever, you get the spike up, and that's where you can get it, what I call a single leg failure pad, goes straight up and then straight down and then takes out the left side low. And now at about 10.20 in the morning, that's where you get that, the second part of the day, it's sometimes even the third, but basically I like to look at it as the second part of the day. Um, the first part is really uh, very early from 5 or 6.30 in the morning. That's kind of where you can get some really good rallies. Sometimes that's the low of the whole day. Then you get a click, two-click session or it's the high of the day. So in this particular instance, uh, we've had a lot of choppiness, lower highs, lower lows. Eventually, we, we formed this kind of base, had this arch formation, We've got two bars in which to close above the 45.19 level. We're at 45.22. So this is the second bar. The last bar closed just above at 45.20. This is trying to. So that is an A minus right there because it took out the left side low. So it's a failure pattern. Now we have on the way down a trough A, lowercase on the way down. And this is a continuation of A, B, E slash 
C, F slash D, and this could be an E or a G. So this is for those of you who do channel wave analysis, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But more importantly, if this takes out the 45, if it goes to 45.23 in this bar right, preferably this bar right now, it starts to gray A. Now you're starting the second part of the day. And you can see that every, every bout of buying has been met with selling, and every bout of selling, although it's gone to lower lows, and lower highs has, has met with some buying. And that just says to me, that speaks to what I've been talking about, that the daily charts are in sell modes in all the key stocks and key indexes, but those weekly charts are still showing buying strength. So when you talk about a crash or a smash or whatever you're talking about, you have to wait for the 914 to close down in the weekly charts to even consider that you've got a sell signal, let alone a sell mode. Okay, with that said, let's just do, go through our normal, the preamble, uh, repeat, and uh, let me just show you. So Jets made this inversion. This is like a pyramid formation. So far it's taken price and time, but now it's using up more time than price as it's trying to find some kind of a base in the 18 area. And this is with crude oil. Uh, up $1.79 on a continuous contract right now, breaking out. There's this inverted cup. This is what we call about the, uh, show you the chart right now. This is, if I can move that away, I'll get it. There it is. This is, so the H pattern we were talking about is when you come down sharply, you have a rally, hold the left side low, or just take it out for one bar, that same bar you close above it, then you can have another arch formation, probably a smaller one, going from an H to an M. This is the reverse Y, green, because when you take out that left side high, you can go a lot higher with the same same uh, context, same data and information that you would use on the H, you'd use on the Y, reverse Y. Look, here's your, here's your H pattern, a reverse Y, breaks out, goes even higher. Another one breaks out, goes even higher. I drew this in as the last one, a big one, and it took out this left side. Now, this is a Chapman Wave a cup and ladle, and it says, crude oil, if this is correct and the daily is a new leg B, because there's not, you can never get a higher letter than a G, because you have to start, you never get an H, you have to start over again or see where there's an alternate count. If this is B, crude oil for the next, uh, I'd say, next seven or eight sessions should be going even higher, right? Because it's got that reverse Y pattern. So that tells me that Jets is this pyramid pa pattern, probably going to have to go to lower lows. So the question came in, where was it? Uh, on this side or that side? Um, oh, yes. How do you feel about the UUU? That's a uranium company. And uh, UEC now. Oh, here you see. So you, 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 this is the Uranium <clears throat> Energy Fuels Inc. Uranium Company. He has this reverse Y pattern. And this should be uh, F, F slash B. Almost looks like crude oil. Look at that. F slash B. Alternate count only because the 9 is so strong. The MACD is so strong. The stochastic's at 83 on balance volume is still weak. We haven't even got overbought yet in on balance volume. So, yes, I like him. Remember, I said I like him both. I, my preference was the one that we have for subscribers to opening call. In fact, today we took a, I think, I don't know, I can't remember. It's about a 40, 43% gain in just a tad, another little bit off, just part of money management. Um, but that's the one I like the best. But I see UEC, you, you, you should follow UEC. Yes, UEC, look, another move up. There's the Chapman Wave falling axe formation, a very small one. We broke to the upside. I showed this in my video for subscribers, my hour-long video on Saturday. Um, and uh, leg C, this is a Chapman Wave cup and ladle pattern uh, to peak D. And that says, in this particular pattern, if you take out the left side high, the lip on the left, in a leg C, and do it strongly, there's a real good chance you're still going to go to a D. And now you've got, instead of a cup and handle, which is a really unfavorable pattern, unless you get the exact low, but you still have to expect that if it goes high, you could come back and test that low. This is, means you've spiraled right, look at cup and later. You spiraled out of this cup formation. And I've done the left side, right side price time at 
and it's taking it out. Uh, a week later, did it, but it did it. And this says it should go to tea on a weekly basis. So this is actually my preference right now. I think it might be getting, uh, if it should start, look, yeah, the on balance one's getting a little choppy. Not the you, you, you. That's what I see. You, 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 you could play catch up. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Questions. I, I'm going to do the next hour. That's Steve's show, but I, I got a lot of requests to come. Can you also send requests at Basil Chapman at TFNN.com? I'll, I'll do my best to pick them up. Um, and the other question, I, I, I there are a bunch of things I want you to deal with. I, I think I'm running out of time here. And uh, so the Palantir was one. I'll look at these after the break. Uh, Palantir Technologies, uh, one is another one, GTBIF. I didn't ever see the GTBIF. It's in the cannabis area, uh, having a very strong move up today, 11.05. Oh, sorry, today it's pulling back down 83 cents, but it's had a huge move from the sixes to almost 12. That's a, that's a huge move. So I'll do that uh, when I get back. Um, I might even have to take a moment's time at some point to do some trading in between, we'll see what happens. So we've taken, we've hit that 45.17 level, trying to rally off it now. Wow, so this doesn't become a G because there's no H. So that becomes uh, a G slash B and a C. This is now a C on the way down in the 10 minute chart. So I'll discuss all of this 
uh, when we get back, so uh, in the den or in Tiger YouTube, if you've got any questions, post them and I'll deal with them in this next hour. Uh, there are a lot of things that I personally also want to look at. I may as well just do it uh, as a public forum. Uh, and there's your lowercase h that goes to lowercase m right here as we're speaking. <clears throat> I love when the demonstrations that we are doing are live and you can see what happens. Uh, we'll come back. It'll give us a good few minutes and we'll see what happens because the lowercase m that goes to lowercase, lowercase h that goes to lowercase m to our left side low. And this is now the third bar. We'll see what happens on the second and third bars if it goes even. So I will be back to Steve's Hour and uh, check out my former day newsletter and um, hold tight. Oh, it's got a lot of action today. See you.